All right, I am back. After coming back from out of the country, I came down with a classic case of the yuck. And the past four or five days, I've just been zonked, mostly sleeping, not really eating anything. It's like a mild cold flu kind of thing. I'm not sure what. Uh, I took a COVID test. It came negative. I'll take another one tonight or tomorrow just to be sure in case the first one was a false negative. But I have just been zonked and unable to do anything. And today I'm swimming up from the deep end and I, I can kind of function. You can hear that I don't sound my, my best. This is that uh, amp of Keith Williams, the uh, GA40 clone that he built for 5 Watt World that uh, I'm going to be making mo better. And uh, you can see here that I've removed the old power switch, which was located here. It was the three-way with a standby position. Very large switch, totally unnecessary, given that the amp has got a GZ34 rectifier tube. It's not really, it was not a good impl implementation as far as the longevity of a rectifier tube was concerned because it was interrupting uh, the rectified path to the first reservoir node. It was of no benefit. Talked to Keith, and uh, we're just going to put in a standard one. We're going to put it here where it normally is on a fender build. Um, uh, I'm going to change out the fuse holder because the fuse holder that was in there was pretty cheap. And I removed the long bushing speaker jack. We're going to get two new short bushing spe speaker jacks in here shortly. And I'm about to show you what I'm going to get started on on the inside. Uh, once I got the power switch and, and fuse and speaker out of the way, I could ha see this area of the wiring better. And I'll point some stuff out there in just a moment. First, let me point out back here. I had mentioned during the initial inspection that I, I was concerned about these machine screws seemingly just going through holes in the chassis. Maybe they were wedged in place. And uh, I was surprised when Keith told me that these were actually tapped, threaded holes. So these machine screws are going into threads within the chassis itself. And I was surprised because the cutout there for the IEC itself is kind of uh, homemade. You can see file marks on it. So that didn't match up with uh, expectations of a uh, of a drilled out, not drilled out, sorry, tapped, threaded hole here. Uh, that said, if you're going to do that, it'd be better to have a PEM nut. Uh, as it does not have a PEM nut, I'm going to make sure that these are tight, and then I'm going to get some machine cap screw, some, some sorry, I cannot talk because I'm zonked, forgive me. I'm going to get some caps nuts from the back real tight so these screws cannot work their way loose. And as you can see, I've disconnected some of the wires here, and these are all going to get redressed. Um, crucially, all these wires here in this bundled up in this corner where the uh, long screws which hold, or bolts which hold the chassis to the cabinet pass by, uh, those screws can abrade wires there. So we're not going to have any lead, uh, any wires going there. They're all going to be addressed to the side, make sure there's some nice gaps there. Um, no big deal. And, you know, I didn't point it out in the previous video because how much do I want to nitpick? How much do I want to be like, and this is wrong, and this is wrong, and this is wrong, and this is wrong. You know, it just, it's negative for negativity's sake at some point. And I, I touched on the most important things before. Let me show you what I'm going to work on next. All right, you can see that a lot of these connections are not well done. Uh, right here, you can see this orange wire from this green pin to this green pin is soldered in place, but the screen supply going to this uh, filter cap here is just sitting in place. It's just held in place by like one or two strands that are still touching solder. Hopefully you can, the camera is letting you see that. That's really unreliable. I'm surprised this thing has been consistently passing signal. All that's going to get cleaned up. All the connections here on the octal sockets, including the rectifier socket, are about to get redone properly and securely. And um, one of the reasons I wanted to get the switches and stuff out of the way was so I'd have good access to that. So I'm going to get started on that next, and then I'll show you the after. All right, here from the rear view, the old power switch's hole location is plugged, a new higher quality fuse holder, the new single Whole single throw, simple but effective power switch, all that's necessary. 
uh, new speaker jacks here, both switchcraft. This is a 12A and this is an 11. So this is the one that shunts to ground. So this, just like on a Princeton, this is the main speaker output, but if you want to run another cab in parallel, you can do it that way. Let me show you the inside here, what's changed. You can see that the lead dress in this area is much cleaner. All steering away from this area here, as mentioned. I have not run the wire from the hot yet. I'll do that a little, little bit. You'll see why. I do have the neutral and ground all nicely connected. You can see these added caps nuts here. You can see the added diodes here helping any rectifier tube out. And uh, a lot of cleaned up wiring in here. So all this wiring, with the exception of the primaries here to the output transformer, all this wiring has been changed out. And, you know, the secondaries here going to the rectifier socket. That's all been redone. Here's a new wire, which goes off of pin 8 of the rectifier, which will go to the filter node. And there's some other stuff I'll show you in a minute. Uh, in Keith's defense to some of the original, uh, a little bit sloppy work, it's amazing he did such a good job. This is a Weber power transformer, and nothing against the transformer itself, but the wire that they use is a really difficult wire to work with in that the, uh, the, strand, the strands of the wire itself don't want to accept solder. It's really hard to tin it. It's really hard to get it to start to flow. And the jacket melts if you look at it crosswise. So to do this without a temperature-controlled uh, iron, as he you know he he just would have used a standard soldering iron, is really tricky. I was able to do it uh, working at 650 degrees and using some heat sink stuff with a, a good old-fashioned hemostats, as found in uh, mobile army surgical hospitals and uh, frat houses. Not only is the wire on this Weber transformer difficult to work with, but the, these tube sockets seem to be the ones that Weber sells. And these ceramics um, are usable, but quality is a weird thing. Um, as far as using them for tubes and normal operation, the quality is not bad. It's not as good as some others, but it's not bad. But as far as working with them, it's very, very difficult. They have very large hole openings. So it's really hard to get any surface tension to fill that. And the tinning is not great on these. They're kind of flimsy and solder wants to flow down into the pin itself within the socket. You have to watch it for that and not let that happen. Let me get some stuff out of the way so you can see better what I'm talking about. I've got some old stuff here, some old grids here. that are going to get redone. Let me snip them out. Make sure I'm cutting the right thing. Get those out of the way. And this red wire, that's where this wire is going to go when I change out the filter cap. Just leaving a little bit for myself. Let's see here. This blue wire is the cathode. It's going to get replaced with this yellow cathode wire here. I've got some excess for now. And there's an orange wire right here, which is going to get replaced with this orange wire, which is going to the screens. So, it you know, it's going to get worse before it gets better, then it's going to get much, much better. Uh, the green wires here, these are 18-gauge uh, Teflon-coated silver-stranded wires for the heaters. Uh, notice they're not tightly twisted here. It doesn't matter on these output tube sockets. C. Saldano, etc. I could have just done straight wires from here to here, but... Uh, to do that trick, I think this would have required uh, more flexibility. I think I'm going to remove these uh, grid resistors that I added, grid stoppers, because um, I was initially running them uh, from 1 to 5 the way uh, they were before. I think it would be better to run the grids on this side, and then I'll just go to this unused pin uh, 6 to 5 like you'd find on some other fenders from that from the similar era. So the grid stoppers will just be mounted here. I can use these same resistors most likely, but there's no need to bring the grids over here by the power stuff. I have done the heater wire uh, from the transformer to here neatly without weird joints. And then this yellow wire goes over to the lamp. 
and then to this octal, from this octal to this octal, and then I don't have any heater wires connected yet. I'm going to be redoing the heater wires to the preamp tubes. And on the three Novel sockets, I'm going to be replacing those sockets. Let me show you why. Hopefully it's visible here. Uh, the camera sees things differently than we do. Uh, if I could show you in 3D, it'd be easier. But uh, on all the sockets, but especially this one for the phase inverter, the pre-existing wiring here, uh, his heater wiring is really taut and has smushed all these pins together this way. And we really would want to have some slack and have some distance. And with this very stiff wire he used, it's not possible. And it's uh, not great quality wire. Probably the wire came in a kit. Uh, but due to uh, the way that this, the, these three ceramic uh, Novel sockets have the center post, which is not really being used, uh, if I replace these with some Beltons, and I have some, uh, then I can, I'll have a gap in the middle and I can run the heater to pin 9 through the center of each preamp tube and keep the grids uh, well away from the heater supply. So that's what I'm going to do. And I will be chucking some 22 gauge Teflon coated stranded wire into a, my drill and make a big long run of this stuff and redo all the preamp uh, socket heater wiring and replace the three Novel sockets because it's easier to do that. Now that I have worked with those these Weber ceramics, I wish I'd replaced all, all of them with Beltons. It would be faster to, to just replace and redo everything from scratch than to reuse these, but I was trying to save them a little bit of money. It's uh, just not a very pleasant socket to work with, but I'll, I'll make it work. But those Novels have got to go. Well, this is frustrating. I know that I ordered a whole bunch of Belton Novel tube sockets with shield bases, and I cannot for the life of me find them right now. And uh, it's as I record this, it's late the afternoon before uh, Labor Day. So it'll be Tuesday before I can swing out to Tube Depot and pick up some more. But I'm going to um, heed the calendar and listen to my body, which says it's, it's done for the day. I've been pushing myself to get this much done. And it's a pretty good length to reach for a video, I guess. Anyway, these ceramic cheapos won't be missed, and uh, I'll have a lot more freedom to uh, do good lead dress for the critical preamp connections. Show you some pretty heater wiring coming up in the next one and all that. Let me show you a few things yet to come on the inside, what to expect next time. So in the process of replacing the three Novel sockets, most of these wires going to the preamp here, probably all of them will get replaced with some stranded wire like I used elsewhere. It's just, uh, the stranded stuff is nicer. This stuff can be rigid, can be microphonic, and it can be easy for a wire to break. None of which usually applies to good stranded wire, and that 20 gauge stuff I like is fantastic for that. Uh, this switch will be mounted so it's flush like the power switch. I mentioned that before. The foot switch jack's also getting replaced so it's not sticking out. It'll be a short bushing like the speaker jacks. Uh, these two Black Beauties, I've already tested them. I think I mentioned it in the previous video. If not, I might have mentioned it in a live stream. They're way out of tolerance as far as capacitance, and they both leak quite a bit of DC voltage. And Keith was aware that might happen. And I've got suitable uh, orange drops to go in their place. Uh, these are the 600, uh, the sorry, the 418P series. Uh, they are polyesters. There's a mixture. The rest of these are mostly polypropylene. I think there's a few polyesters he used in there. These are polyester. This is polyester. Um, these are the first two caps. Um, this is a, a pentode setup. And in a pentode with a lot of gain, particularly the, the coupling cap uh, going to the, the next stage is critical to the sound. So we're going to get in there with the uh, with a, um, polyester one. And I have a matching one here for the screen node of the pentode. And it'll all sound fantastic. Once we are done, and uh, all this stuff here is going to get neatened up, then I'm going to pull all the knobs and jacks off the front so I can uh, take these screws out, flip the board up. I'm going to change out these filter caps, 
And as I mentioned in the first video on this amp, when I change out the filter caps, when I'm doing any kind of work on a, uh, a turret, or sorry, an eyelet board like this, where there's an air gap, I want to see what's happening beneath. I don't want to have any solder stalactites and stalagmites where they could have anything happening as far as shorts that I, I'm unaware of. And we'll be making a minor change to the ground scheme in the process. And once all that's done and uh, uh, some of the uh, cheaper pots are replaced that are all the good quality 3 8 inch bushing alphas, and we listen to it, we're going to revisit the paraphase phase inverter and see if we can come up with a much more musical and more effective master volume than the simple one that's in there now. So he wants it done right. So we're going to get every bit of goodness out of it possible. Until then, thanks for watching.